Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're talking about PyPI and atomic rights and the left pad like incident that happens over the weekend. Uh, if you're not familiar with any of those things, uh, PyPI is the Python package index. It's where packages get uploaded to and pip installed from for most of the users of Python. Uh, and the left pad incident refers to, I think it was back in like 2015. I don't know, it was, it was a while back. Uh, essentially, one user pulled their package from NPM, and a big chunk of the NPM ecosystem depended on it in one way or another through you know, transitive dependencies, despite left pad being a little bit silly. It's <laughs> essentially a string method. Uh, a similar thing happened with PyPI over, over the uh, weekend, and I want to walk you through everything that happened there, uh, and I'll leave my sort of opinion thoughts towards the end if you want to ignore the spice there. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so PyPI, Python Package Index, uh, there are users that upload packages to this, and packages can have any number of owners. And PyPI sent out an email, uh, well, actually a series of emails. There are, some, there are some bugs in the email. I actually got two of them. Uh, some people got three or more. Some of them had localhost in them. Uh, but they looked something like this. A, pa a project you maintain has been designated as critical. Now, the way that PyPI computed this was based on download counts, I believe in the last six months. Uh, they picked somewhere in like the top 1% and designated those as critical packages, just based on download count. They didn't do any uh, dependency analysis or anything else like that, uh, just purely based on download count, uh, which kind of makes it a bit of a popularity contest. But that's I think it's a fairly good proxy given that, uh, well, they do have dependency analysis, but they just didn't utilize it here, which is fine. That's not the problem here. <laughs> um, projects were deemed critical, and uh, the email noted that in order to modify, upload, etc., a critical package, uh, multi-factor authentication needed to be enabled on your account. Well, I guess specifically two-factor authentication. Uh, you know, multi-factor, more than two is not necessary. And they also offered uh, giving away security keys for those that didn't have this set up. Uh, so that's what this this last little part here. Uh, the original email, some people saw localhost in this domain, and so it was just like a little bug there. I do note that this looks suspiciously like a phishing email. You know, HTTP colon slash slash uh, not HTTPS already has me you know setting off alarm bells. I you know moused over these links when I got this email. I didn't click on any of them because I wasn't sure that it was in a phishing email, uh, but this was a perfectly legitimate email. And I think that's kind of the, the first part of this that was a problem. There was almost, there was, there was very little communication around this and kind of surprised a bunch of people. Uh, I already had two-factor authentication, so I didn't have to do anything as part of this, uh, but this was the email that went out to people. Uh, so the first thing that I did is I went and logged into my account, not clicking those links. I went to pypi.org directly, uh, you know, put in my password through my password manager, did my two-factor so that I was logged in, and I wanted to see which one of my packages were critical. And I um, don't mean to brag here, oops, sorry about the ding, uh, but 15 of my packages showed up as critical. And I was pretty surprised by this, especially these ones toward the bottom. These are packages that I no longer maintain or haven't worked on in forever. Uh, and this one was actually a meme. I made this up as a, as a joke just to see if I could, and apparently now it is a critical part of the Python ecosystem, which terrifies me. Half a million people download this, uh, downloaded this in the last month, which is more than pretty much all of my libraries, except for you know, PyTest Talks, Precommit, Flake 8, and the Flake 8 dependency, which <laughs> is wild to me. But th that's not the part of this story. Uh, I actually found of the 15 packages that mine are critical, three of them no longer maintained. I don't upload anything to them anymore. Uh, which is which is surprising. Um, but that's not the story today. The story today is about Atomic Rights. Uh, Atomic Rights was a library, and the maintainer of Atomic Rights did not really agree with the stance taken by PyPI here, enforcing restrictions on maintainers of open source libraries. And so what they did is they removed their package because they noticed if, uh, without having to set up the two-factor, they were able to remove their package. Uh, and then recreate the package, thinking that, okay, that'll just clear the state and hook around in the database. Uh, their intention wasn't to do this out of malice. They were just 
uh, I just w wanted to see what would happen. And unfortunately, this ended up purging all of the versions of Atomic Rights from PyPI. Now, if we look at uh, pypistats.org, which is a website that you know I use to look up uh, libraries, there's also pepi.tech. So either either of these two, and I'm probably pronouncing pepi, I don't know. Um, either of these two are ones that I look at to uh, figure out you know, download statistics, and they're they're basically the same. They source from the same thing. So you can see here, six and a half million downloads in the last month. And this one also repeat, reports the same thing. And they have similar graphs, and you can kind of play around with those. Uh, but Atomic Rights is a dependency of quite a lot of things, including PyTest, uh, only on Windows, and not anymore, uh, <laughs> and Home Assistant, and a whole bunch of things. It's a pretty useful little utility library. And accidentally all of the versions got purged and so uh, there was there was quite the backlash and um, blame shifting and virtue signaling and all the all the necessary stuff that comes along with essentially an accidental disaster scenario um and you know they they ended up deciding you know i'm, I'm not going to maintain this anymore anyway maybe this is a good signal to move off of it uh and python 3 has you know os.replace which is you know, uh, works well enough and is in all of the supported versions of Python. Later, the packages ended up getting restored from PyPI, and so in, in theory, this all kind of blows over a little bit. Uh, but that's that's the gist of what happened. <laughs> and then what happened afterwards is a bit of like a, a Twitter storm, and I'm not going to go through all of, all of the people's um, you know, remarks on this. I'll let you scroll through Twitter and, and make your own decisions on things there. Uh, I wanted to talk about my opinions here and what I think is an actionable outcome of some of the stuff that happened here. So the first opinion that I have here is that this whole critical designation thing, it's not quite classist, but it feels like things are being marked as more important than others on PyPI. And I think that's the core, that's the core problem that I have with this. Uh, I'm completely okay with a package index trying to protect their users and protect their their interests here by having their you know uploaders authenticate themselves, go through multi-factor, make sure that they're a legitimate user. I think that's fine, uh, and I think that's a good first step towards you know securing PyPI. Uh, I think this whole critical project thing is kind of nuts. I would have just you know slowly rolled it out, communicated to the users, hey. You know, we're, gonna, we're, we're thinking about adding multi-factor. Please provide input. Uh, you know, we're going to do it uniformly across all users. We're not going to, you know, oh, you're an important user, so we're going to put different restrictions on you than everyone else. No, I think they should have just done it for everyone. Uh, the second thing that I think is actionable and should have come out of this is PyPI has a bit of a problem with immutability. Notably, I think PyPI should just forbid deletes entirely. You know, being able to delete an entire package and cause a whole bunch of problems to a whole bunch of users kind of opens the door for bad actors. Not saying that, that Marcus is a bad actor here, uh, but a malicious actor could do something similarly. Uh, so I, I think like, you know, redesigning the index to a way where Everything is immutable by default. Once it's been uploaded, you can't modify it. You can't release a new version which clobbers the old one. That's already kind of in place. I'll talk about that in another video at another time. Um, but basically make it so you can't change the state later. Basically, if you pin a version, it should continue to work. That's what I would want from PyPI. And that's not the case today. Uh, the last thing is, um, you know, these sort of ramp, ramp ups in uh is package security from PyPI. This isn't new. There was a change about a month ago where uh, you can no longer upload using username and password. You have to use an API token instead. And uh, at the time, this felt a little bit weird to me because you know username and password and API token are essentially the same security level. So why switch from one to the other? I guess the subtle difference between those is username and password allows you to change account level settings rather than just uploading a, a project. So it's slightly different scope but it felt a little bit weird and that one also was i think poorly communicated similar to this one um but i think again like that one was done better than than this rollout because it was done uniformly across all projects there's no you know, oh you're a special project because you have lots of downloads or you know, you're not a special project because you don't have as many downloads uh i think that separation was was pretty important here 
Um, but the last, the last kind of like little thought that I had here is, open source is is, you know, a, a tricky landscape. It's people putting in free work as a hobby and getting not too much out of it, and having people, you know, outraged and you know, calling calling for Marcus's head and like all this all this other you know, bleem bleeming and screaming and yelling like you know software is provided without warranty that's you know in most open source licenses like you're, you're kind of you know you, you break it you buy it you you're you get what you pay for and if you're paying zero dollars i don't think you should really be expecting you know stuff from people now there is probably an ethical obligation to do the right thing and you know i know my users trust me with my packages and that's part of you know, that's part of open source it's you know, implicit trust but i don't know i don't know where i'm going with this anyway <laughs> i wanted to walk you through what happens and you know some of my little thoughts and how i think pypi can move constructively to solve these sorts of things and try and avoid this you know backlash in the future uh, anyway hopefully you found this useful and i don't know leave a comment if, if you didn't and reach out to me on platforms if you want to talk about this uh, but yeah have a good one